The intent of this video is to review the post-World War II specially designed concrete penetrating mega bombs. We will also look at rare footage of releases and strikes. During World War II, the Allies designed and operationally deployed three specifically designed bombs to destroy German hardened targets like U-boat pens, submarine assembly factories, fortifications, battleships, and bunkers. This graphic from a declassified October 1946 Army Air Force Proving Ground report titled Comparative Tests of the Effectiveness of Large Bombs Against Reinforced Concrete Structures Anglo-American Bomb Test Project Ruby shows the relative sizes of the three fortified target bombs. There were 158 Disney Swishes deployed in World War II. 854 tall boys, and 41 grand slams. Disney swishes were the only truly thick concrete slab penetrating bombs developed by the Allies. Tall boys were not designed as concrete penetrating bombs as highlighted on this page from a June 1946 British Explosive Ordnance document. The bomb was designed to penetrate the earth next to the target structure and induce damage from deep earth shock waves. The Grand Slam bomb was also designed as an earthquake type bomb as highlighted on this text from a 1945 U.S. Navy bomb disposal document titled Bombs and Fuses Pyrotechnics. It is not designed as concrete penetrating. Target bomb near misses are more desirable than target contacts. The effectiveness of the Disney's Tall Boys and Grand Slams was evaluated after World War II. Tall Boys and Grand Slams and the U.S. equivalent did not penetrate thick concrete structures as deeply as predicted. It was speculated that the bomb's cases ruptured at concrete impact or sensitivity of explosive filler or the fuse's time delay did not function properly. To test this hypothesis, Disney Swishes, Tall Boys and Grand Slams, and Amazons were tested against the Valentin U-Boat Assembly Factory at Farge, Germany under controlled conditions. The plant's roof thickness varied from 14 feet 9 inches to 23 Three feet. This is a modern day view of the building. The location of the Valentin assembly factory is shown on this map representing the state of the right controlled territories as of July 1943. Amazon bombs were added to the mix during Project Ruby. Amazons were designed with a smaller bomb diameter and thicker casings than Grand Slams. The Grand Slams diameter is 48 inches where the Amazons diameter is 36 inches. Tall boy case thickness equated to 1.2 inches, Grand Slams 1.75 inches, and Amazon 3 inches. Amazons were considered semi-armor piercing bombs. The building's target hits were 11 tall boys, 6 grand slams, and 10 Amazons. Key results of the test include, none of the bombs tested, Disney Swishes, Tall Boys, Grand Slams, or Amazons were effective against the building's thick concrete slabs. They all failed. The Amazon showed good penetration, but its case needs to be beefed up to withstand breakup at a site impact. Tall Boys and Grand Slams geometry is not optimized for concrete penetration. Their casing is not thick enough to resist rupture from a high altitude concrete strike. The key test recommendations include design a bomb with the following attributes as compared to the Amazon. Smaller diameter, pointed nose, greater case strength, maintain roughly the same explosive charge. Consider increasing the case's structural integrity by internal reinforcements like layered walls, ribs, corrugations, and or stronger materials. These recommendations led to the development of the Amazon 2 and the Samson bombs. These bombs were tested in 1947 under Project Harkin. A description of the new bombs is shown on this page from a 1949 Aberdeen Proving Ground document titled Penetration and Deceleration of 25,000 Pound Bombs in Massive Concrete Targets. The Amazon 2 is 2 inches wider than the original Amazon at 38 inches, but maintains the same overall height of the Amazon 1. The casing has increased in thickness from 3 to 4.5 inches. The explosive fill equates to 4,200 pounds, which is 82% of the fill of a tall boy. The bomb's weight is 25,000 pounds, which is heavier than the Grand Slam at 22,000 pounds. The Samson is heavier than the Amazon 2's at 25,200 pounds. It is longer and has a smaller diameter than the Amazon 2's. Its diameter is 32 inches and its warhead length is 196 inches. It will have greater penetration than the Amazon. The case wall thickness equates to 4.125 inches. Explosive charge weight is 3,900 pounds, which is 76% of a tall boy. Both bombs adopted the tall boy's tailspin assembly. This image shows the geometry, 
explosive fill weight, case diameter, and wall thickness of the Tallboy 2s and the Samsons. This image shows the overall dimensions of both the Amazon 2 and Samson as compared to Tallboys and Grand Slams. Let's look at a video of a release and strike of an Amazon 2 bomb on the Valentine Type 21 Submarine Assembly Building in support of Project Harkin. The bombs were released by B-29s in 1947, who said B-29s never released bombs over Germany. The Amazon 2 was released from an altitude of 17,000 feet. Their explosive filler was inert. The goal was to measure the penetration and the bomb's case structural integrity after impact. Notice that the bomb is starting to rotate as it falls. The bomb will strike at this point on the target. The target building is coming into view now. The bomb is striking the target. This clip is from a high-speed Kodak camera mounted on the roof. The camera is operating at 2,000 frames per second. The Amazon 2 is striking the roof at 1,100 feet per second, or Mach 0.99. If you watched carefully, you could have seen the bomb in rotation. The roof side perforation hole. The roof is 14 feet 9 inches in thickness. Recall that the Amazon 2's bomb diameter equates to 38 inches. The bomb's perforation hole as seen from inside the building. The bomb's casing coming to rest in the building's floor. The Amazon 2's casing is salvaged for structural evaluation. This image shows the target's roof thickness from a 1949 document titled Part 2, Harkin Project, Bomb Analysis and Related Subjects. Area 1 is 14 feet 9 inches thick. Area 2 is of mixed thickness. Area 3 is 25 feet 9 inches thick. This image shows the location of the Amazon 2 bomb strikes. The three roof aim points are highlighted on this building map. The location of the 17 Amazon strike points are shown as symbols on the map. A similar bomb strike map for the 16 Samsung releases. This table summarizes the results of both the Amazon 2 and the Samsung bomb target strikes. The key columns are roof thickness, vertical penetration length or perforation, and bomb casing condition. Some bombs hit the side of the building and this data was not used. All bombs that were recovered after roof penetration were intact and undeformed. It was recommended that all future large bombs be fitted with an azimuth steering system like the Azon bomb. The maximum reinforced concrete penetration of various bombs is shown on this image from a May 1946 Army Air Force Scientific Advisory Board document titled Explosives and Terminal Ballistics. The upper x-axis is the weight class and type of bomb. The y-axis is the depth of either concrete penetration or perforation in feet. The drop bars in the body of the chart are for bomb release altitudes of either 10 or 30,000 feet. If dropped from a 30,000 foot altitude, the tall boy bomb will penetrate around 11 feet of concrete, a grand slam at 16 feet. Although the intent of the Harkin test was to assess the structural integrity of the new bomb's casing, this table from a 1964 U.S. Army Material Command document titled Warheads General lists the penetration depth of various bombs and projectiles. Amazon 2's bomb penetration depth in reinforced concrete equates to 177 inches, whereas Samson's is listed as 249 inches. We can add these penetration depths to the graph shown earlier for a comparison with World War II Tallboys and Grand Slams. The new Samsung's concrete penetration depth well exceeds the Grand Slam's penetration depth by 30% and the casing will be intact. If you've enjoyed this weapon system review, please consider engaging with the video by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.